Hello everyone, I am Naval Yamul. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Data Master. I express my sincere gratitude to all the viewers, those who have shown for my Databricks Certified Data Engineering Associate Part 1 and Part 2. So I got a very good response from you people. So now in this video, I am going to talk about the Part 3 on the Databricks Certified Data Engineering Associate Part 3. So let me proceed. So this was about all five parts when you prepare for when you start preparing for the Databricks data engineering certification. These are the five parts as I have already prepared part one and part two videos on the first part that is Lake House platform and ELT with the Spark SQL and Python. So now in this part in this video, we are going to see about the incremental data processing. So you can see approximately 10 to 11 questions based on this incremental data processing. So what we are going to talk in this uh, video is we need to know about what is structure streaming on top of that structure streaming. We need to know what is auto loader and uh, after auto loader. We need to know what is your middle and architecture. I've already prepared some videos on that. So I request you to please watch that and what are bronze table, silver table and gold table and moving further to the delta live table. It's a new framework as I have already prepared one video on what is delta live table. So I strongly recommend watching that video. So delta live table I have divided into two parts. So first I'll cover few on this part three of the video and I'll cover few on the production pipeline because these two are interlinked. So few questions on the Delta Live table can be seen here and few questions can be seen on the next part. So in the next part, part four, I'll be preparing the video uh, questions based on these two chapters that is production pipeline and the data governance. So let us proceed further. So incremental data processing question one, which of the following tools is used by auto loader process data incremental. So just try to remember when you are working on the spark spark can handle both type of data like you can use a batch data or you can use a streaming data so spark has a structure streaming but there are certain limitations on that structure streaming like you have to give a schema on your own and if you are working with a very large scale data maybe structure streaming won't work but there is a new concept what Databricks people have bought that is a auto loader. So auto loader is nothing but it sits on top of the structure streaming only. So it works exactly same of as of structure streaming. So if you know structure streaming, uh, then knowing auto loader will be very simple. So for example, I'll tell you in batch if you want to create a data frame, we just say spark dot read and whatever file format we have CSV, Spark, JSON dot file format and we give a path but when it comes to streaming we instead of read we just say read stream so it becomes an example of a structured streaming we just provide read stream but there are certain limitations in the streaming like you need to give a schema every time so they have built an auto loader so if you want to create an auto loader like a data frame using an auto loader we just say spark dot read stream but on top of that, we just use a cloud files as a format. So format, we write cloud files. So when I write cloud files, it means that I'm using an auto loader feature which sits on top of the structure streaming. So the question one says, which of the following tools is used by auto loader process data incremental. So you can see here uh, checkpointing is one of the concept of the structure streaming. Data Explorer is one of the tab in the uh, one of the tab in the Databricks. Databricks SQL is a complete data warehouse solution. Unity Catalog is a new unified data governance by Databricks. So the only answer that comes out of this auto loader is your Spark structure streaming. So auto loader sits on top of structure streaming. So why I've written this code in the next uh, next questions we may need this. Okay. So I hope this is very clear to you now. Let us proceed further to the second question. So a data engineering is designing a data pipeline. The source system generates files in a shared directory that is also used by other processes. So a data engineering is designing a pipeline 
and generates a file in the shared directory that is also used by other processes. As a result, the file should be kept as is and will accumulate in the directory. The data engineer needs to identify which files are new since the previous run in the pipeline and set up the pipeline to only ingest those new files in each run. So let us take an example here. So I'll explain that. Suppose you have your data in your ADLS, ADLS account. So in that ADLS, we have a container. In that we have a folder or a directory. Suppose all in that directory we have suppose first file which is of let us take an example of today's date 21.8.23. We create a pipeline and we process this data. So tomorrow we are going to give an we get a new file that is 22.8. So when we create a pipeline we don't want this previous file to be executed again. So we want only new files which are coming into your ADLS that needs to be executed. So they have saying the same thing. So which of the following tools can use the data engineer? As I've told you, Unity Catalog is a data governance solution. Delta Lake, Delta Lake is a format where we use a Delta format to save our data, which we have covered already in the first part, second part of the video. Databricks SQL is a data warehouse solution. Data Explorer is just a tab in your Databricks. So only one answer here that is by using Autoloader. Autoloader will uh, like use or is having only guaranteed once. So it will read the data only once. So once the, the data is read, it will not read it again. So the new files coming into your data lake, only those files are processed in your autoloader. So your answer is E autoloader. I hope you understood this. Let us move forward to the next question. Yeah, this is very important question. So this will confuse a lot. This is this questions will confuse a lot. So there will be two or three questions based on this that what are silver table, gold table and bronze table. When you look at the documentation, it uh, like you feel that it is very simple. But when you are attempting the questions in the exam, uh, in the certificate exam, you might feel it very confusing. You feel that all the answers or all the options are correct. So you need to be very careful here. So I strongly recommend you to watch my uh, middle in architecture video, middle in architecture, middle in architecture, multi hop architecture or also called as a bronze silver architecture. So I want you to watch that. So if you're coming from any previous background from data warehouse and all those things where we use a, a staging layer, but here we are not using a staging layer. We put all the raw data, whatever the raw data is there, we put it into the bronze layer. So I'll just have a quick recap. And then if you have duplicates, you have null record nulls and if you have some corrupt records, anything, anything we store it into the bronze layer by using an autoloader. Again, we use an autoloader. Actually, uh, when we say ingestion, ingesting, there are two options in ingestion. One is by using an autoloader and one is by using a copy into. So there is a copy into command also copy into, but generally copy into works with the help of SQL, SQL command. So as a data analyst or if you are using a Databricks SQL, you might see this option. But autoloader works on structure streaming. Just now we have seen. So if you are dealing with millions of files, billions of files, if you have a huge data, we ingest using an autoloader into the bronze layer. Whatever your raw data is, we keep, keep it in the bronze layer. From bronze, we start cleaning it, start refining it and start shaping that data. And then we save it in our silver table silver table and once we got a silver table so whatever your business question is or whatever the aggregation grouping all that is done and then save it in a gold layer so this gold is consumed by the downstream for business analyst people data analyst people and so on so bronze is a very raw silver is a refining and gold is your enriched data like your uh, aggregated data so this gold can also be called as a business question okay so let me cancel all this yeah so let me start with uh, the question which of the following describes the relationship between the gold and the silver table gold and the silver table okay the gold tables are more likely to contain aggregations yes that is true just now i told you gold tables contain aggregations yes this might be very much true let us move forward 
gold tables are likely to contain valuable data than the silver table this also looks like correct but what is valuable data we need to be more, more specific gold tables are more, more likely to contain a res refined view so it's not like res refined it is enriched than the silver table c will not come gold tables are more likely to contain more data so no it doesn't contain more data we cannot say that even gold table contains a less data as compared to the silver table many times it happens so this also option goes and looking at the last option gold tables are more likely to contain the truthful data so we are not talking about any truthful or something like that so ce also goes so only a option comes out that is your aggregation so this keyword is very important and the answer is a aggregation data i hope this is clear to you let us proceed with the next question which is similar to this so which of the following describes the relationship between the bronze table and the raw data so this is also very confusing bronze table and the raw data so raw data is the data where you have your um, in your adls or maybe in your uh, s3 account and so on there we have a raw data and bronze table so if you just now remember i told you whatever your raw data is there we put it into the bronze table but now let us look at the question bronze table contains less data no i cannot see that uh, bronze table contains more truthful data no it doesn't mean like that bronze table contains aggregates no never because aggregates contains only in the uh, gold layer bronze table contains res refined view of the data than the raw data no it doesn't because bronze table is similar to the raw table but only we uh, sometimes we use only the correct schema if you have a raw data it doesn't have a good schema but in bronze table we create a good schema for that so that is your last option bronze table contains raw data whatever the raw data is bronze table contains but with a schema applied is your correct answer so that is the difference between bronze table and silver uh, bronze table and the gold raw table so when you are attempting you need to be very careful with the options they might ask you the difference between or relationship between the bronze table and the silver table silver and the gold or sometimes they might even confuse you with the gold and the downstream like data analyst people so you need to look at the question carefully and look at the options carefully and then attempt so this is about the relationship so answer is e bronze table that contains raw data with the schema applied let us move forward now so this is one of the question again interesting which of the following structure streaming queries is performing a hop from a silver table to the gold table so just try to understand silver to gold so as i have told you gold table contains a group data gold table contains an aggregations okay so from silver we are moving to gold again this will confuse a lot you need to look at all the options for this yeah so this is option a b c d you may have e option also so looking at the first option spark dot read stream it is streaming dot load we are loading this file and let me quickly go through all this uh, spark dot read dot load raw so just imagine when you are reading a raw data raw data and when we are converting it that will be raw to uh, raw to bronze but our question says silver to gold so definitely these are raw you can look at the keywords also these are raw okay so these two options goes now okay dot table table means okay you already have a silver table on top of that you are reading it and then converting it to the gold so this might be the answer like dot table dot table yes but when you look in detail again dot filter and then we are writing it to the output mode and the table name is new sales from sales we are writing it to new sales but we are just doing a filtering we are doing a filtering so filtering means this might be a silver table because in silver we refine it we filter it and so on but gold table means there has to be some aggregation so this is definitely a silver table but this is not a gold table this might be one more silver table because we are doing filtering but here it is saying sales new sales but here the keyword is group by and aggregation so 
so we are grouping it some store detail with the sum of the sales we are doing aggregation so once you look at this keywords group by an aggregation it means that we are going from silver to gold so please look at the question properly look at these keywords we are talking about silver to gold silver to gold when you are saying silver to gold it is we we'll pick up a silver table do some group by and then write it to the gold table and one more keyword what i uh, looked into is output mode is complete so at the end we use complete mode because we have already completed that table so this is your final answer t so i hope this also is very clear to you but uh, the suggestion is you look at the question properly whether they are taking you the hop from bronze to silver or silver to gold or gold to the downstream you might get that type of question also cool uh, let us move to the next question oh cool so it's based on the trigger now uh, structure streaming it's based on just a structure streaming so they have picked up spark dot table table name they have added a new column they are writing it so write stream they have picked up a table and then writing it to the stream but here they have kept it blank so it is just like a fill in the blanks a data engineer has configured a structure streaming job to read a table manipulate the data and then to perform a write stream exactly we have seen that now this question if you get this type of question it remains same till here so after this point it gets changed so you need to be very careful here you need to be very careful if a data engineer only wants to query to execute a micro batch so you need to know when it comes to writing a stream there is an option called trigger you can use an option trigger so trigger there are four types of triggers you can use dot trigger so there are four types of option maybe i'll show you in the options only here to process data every 5 seconds so this keyword is very important sometimes you might get 2 minutes also sometimes you may get 5 minutes also sometimes they might say not a micro batch but i want all the data to be processed at one go so these keywords are very important so which of the following line of code should a data engineer use in this fill in the blanks so let me show you yeah so first option is when i talk about the trigger the first option is there are four types one is processing time processing time you can see it here processing time so this is the exact match how we are writing it processing time every 5 seconds so actually the answer is this one 5 seconds but they want it to uh, give okay let me uh, show you one uh, pdf where i find out everything here yeah with this you can see it yeah cool so first if you didn't specify anything by default it will be 500 milliseconds by default it will be 500 milliseconds you don't need to worry suppose if they want to use a micro batches at a specified interval of time your processing time should be maybe 5 minutes 5 seconds 2 minutes whatever and suppose they want to process all the data in one single batch then it is one equal to true one equal to true and again there is one more option suppose they want to trigger it for micro batches small micro batches then you have an option in trigger that is available now equal to true so these two takes up a boolean value like true and true and this will take up a string processing time equal to string so i request you to please take a screenshot of this definitely you will see one question but you need to match this exactly with the keyword here it is every 5 seconds so it is like a processing time it should be 5 seconds and it is in the micro batch so you need to be very careful with that question and options uh, so these are three options you can perform i hope you have taken a screenshot of this thank you now Uh, see once equal to five seconds once it will be true and there is nothing called continuous and there is nothing called like five seconds and so on so the only option comes out is processing time equal to five seconds cool let us proceed further in order to in order for a structure streaming to reliably track the exact progress of the processing so that it can handle any kind of failure by 
restarting and or reprocessing yeah these are very important so when you are working on the structured streaming when you are writing your data back so there should be uh, there is a small difference between batch and your streaming in structured streaming when you are writing it you need a checkpoint location so what does that checkpoint location do so this will just in case something happened some failure happened so this checkpoint location will get a uh, checkpoint metadata will know exactly where your data is and from there it will take you uh, from there it will take you and then it will continue in case of failures so here in which of the following two approaches is used by the spark to record the offset so yeah you, you can see i told you there is a checkpoint so but they are asking two approaches two approaches one is checkpoint and second is obviously yeah this will confuse you so checkpoint and water head logs or it is a checkpoint and item put in sinks so let me show you this ppt again yeah so it is fault tolerant read the uh, question keywords correctly so they are talking about the failure <coughs> excuse me failure fault tolerant so fault tolerant is we need a checkpoint and water head logs so this uh, when it is a, a fault tolerant it is checkpoint and water head logs but if they say that uh, exactly one's guarantee it means it is item potent sinks so fault tolerant means checkpointing with the water head logs yeah so the answer is checkpointing and water head log is the correct answer yeah so moving to the next question so data engineering is maintaining a data pipeline so they are talking about about a data pipeline upon data ingestion the data engineer notices that the source data is starting to have a lower level of quality yeah these keywords are very important let me mark this a data engineer would like to automate the process for monitoring the quality level which of the following tools can the data engineering use to solve this problem so uh, the answer is delta live table obviously here so let me first talk about the answer here and then i'll talk about the uh, what is delta live table so i have made a separate video on what is delta live table i'll give you the link on the description i strongly recommend you to watch that so delta live table is a new framework databricks people have brought to do a complete data orchestration data ingestion by just writing a sql query or python script also python also you can use so by just writing a query you can move your data from using a middleware architecture you can move it from the bronze to the gold table and maintaining the quality of the data that is very important so when it comes to the quality quality of the data like refining reshaping then doing a grouping and aggregating all that you can do it in one framework maintaining this quality and moving on to the middleware architecture there is only one framework that is called delta live table so i strongly recommend watching that video you will get a clear understanding on what is delta live table so moving forward so now all the questions are based on the delta live table uh, so next part also there are two three questions based on that so before okay let me go to the next question and i'll show you how the delta live table looks like in a real time so yes this is again based on the delta live table pipeline which includes two data sets so they have two data sets defined using a streaming live table three data sets are defined using a delta live table sources using live table so here whenever you are talking about the delta live table so we need to use a keyword uh, like if you if you know how to create a table by using a sql simple in a notebook style we use a ctas statement ctas we have already covered in part 1 ctas is create table as select so this is uh, like basic when you want to create a delta live table instead of ctas we just say create live table table name as select and then you are writing whatever you want in a select query so this will create a live table i mean delta live table so only one keyword that is live will create a delta live table but in this again there is one more small twist 
if you want to make this table as a streaming so instead of just writing it create live table you can just add create streaming live table that's it so streaming keyword will take care of that table is streaming live will take care of that it is a live delta live table as select and so on so in this question you can see two data sets are defined using streaming live table three data sets are defined using only live table so i hope you understood this two are from the streaming live i mean it is streaming table but it is a delta table and three are just live table it means the delta live table now the table is configured to run in production mode using a continuous pipeline mode so i strongly recommend you to watch again delta live table for these all question series but i'll just put some light on this that is to run the production mode so there are two modes in delta live table one is production mode and one is development mode development mode so this will confuse a lot guys and there will be two questions based on this trust me one is your production mode and development mode in that again when you create a pipeline at a pipeline level they will ask you uh, like your pipeline mode so the pipeline mode is different and your delta live table environment is different in environment like two modes again production and development in the pipeline you have two more continuous and triggered continuous and triggered these are two options so assuming previously unprocessed data exist and all definitions are valid so what do you mean by valid uh, if the data is invalid we add some constraints you might find that in the next uh, next question you may find that question what is expected outcome after clicking the start to update the pipeline so before i proceed to show you before i proceed to show you uh, the options i would like to show you how the delta live table looks like so i have brand one delta live table so let me collapse this yeah so this is what exactly your delta live table environment looks like so i'll just walk through it one is development mode and production mode keep in mind development like your simple software life cycle how it works development mode and then we after all the development we push it to the production mode so in development mode uh, okay before that i want to talk about delta live table cluster so when you start creating all this delta live table uh, with a syntax create live or create streaming live and all those things you will set up you will do some settings based on the cluster so here you don't have an option to use a all purpose cluster in jobs you have that but in compute you don't have the option to use a all purpose cluster you have to use a job compute then what is job compute it is like a job cluster which we have already talked about that job cluster means your pipeline will execute and after your work is done it will terminate automatically that is the meaning of your uh meaning of your job compute so delta live table doesn't have an option to use uh, all purpose cluster then in delta live table there are two modes development mode and production mode so as a name itself indicates development development means there will be a job compute for you but this job compute will stay running for more than 2 hours uh, up to 2 hours so it will remain 2 hours like just in case if there is something you want to do some changes and so on you can do it your uh, your cluster is active you can do the changes but in production as a name itself says production is it will execute and your cluster will terminate immediately immediately it will terminate it will not stop so these are two modes of delta live table but in exam they'll confuse a lot with mixing these modes with the pipeline mode so what is pipeline mode if you get inside the settings here you have a pipeline mode so if you look at the uh, like a tool tip here which is showing the details choose the pipeline mode based on the latency and the cost requirement for your pipeline the triggered pipelines update once and then shut down the cluster until the next manual or schedule update continuous pipelines keep on always running cluster that ingest new data as it arrives so as the name itself indicates triggered means it will execute your pipeline and then it will stop your cluster once it work is done and whenever you have used a scheduled 
uh, trigger at that time it will start it again continuous means your pipeline will start running continuously it will not stop so mix and match these two things both look similar but in uh, exam there are the questions based on this so what i'll do i'll remove all this yeah so you need to look mark the keywords production mode using a continuous pipeline mode so your pipeline will uh, pipeline will run continuously and it is in the production mode so now look at the options i guarantee you that it will confuse you a lot yeah so let me first cut down few options here so all the data set will update at the set interval until the pipeline is shut down so when you look at the production mode production mode as i have told you the cluster cluster will uh, like you need to think your cluster is there and your pipeline is there so first they are talking about pipeline so when i say production mode first i look at the compute resources so okay i'll skip the first sentence second is the compute resources will persist to allow the additional testing no this this won't happen because because it is happening only in the development mode so this is not the correct option because they are saying it is a production pipeline the compute resources will persist but but go unused but go unused compute resource will persist it will not persist only because it is a production mode this also will fail this also will fail the compute resources will be deployed for the update and terminated yes this is what i'm searching for it will terminate when the pipeline is stopped because production mode is the same thing it will terminate so this might be the answer moving forward the compute resources will be terminated okay they are saying that it's only terminated okay let us keep it optional uh, the compute resources will persist for allow no this won't allow okay this is also gone so uh, i am telling you about this question but in exam you might have a development mode you might have a triggered pipeline mode or vice versa production mode with a triggered pipeline mode development mode with a continuous pipeline mode so there can be four scenarios guys so you need to look at uh, carefully so uh, i got into the production mode i feel that the c or d is correct now moving forward a continuous pipeline mode continuous pipeline mode means your pipeline is running continuously so all the data sets will be updated once and the pipeline will shut down no your pipeline won't shut down it is a continuous mode all the data set will be updated at a set intervals yeah it is updated at the set intervals until the pipeline is shut down until means i have to stop that pipeline otherwise it will not stop so the right answer is your c so i hope i have cleared all the points all the basics when it comes to uh, delta live table questions okay so again i strongly recommend you to watch my delta live table video you will get a clear understanding i hope this is very clear to you let us proceed further okay yes so the next question is a data set has been defined using a delta live table and includes an exception clauses constraint valid timestamp except on violation drop row so Uh, so those who are a very fresher those who have not worked on much delta live table will get a lot of confusion no worries i'll have a link for you you can see as i have told you delta live table if you are working on it and if you have to maintain a data quality data quality then we go for delta live table you can see data quality with delta live table now you might say like what type of data quality okay in your raw table you might get a duplicates in your primary key you might get some nulls you might get a entire row duplicates so how i handle all this in a pipeline you can do that by using a constraint so that is what exactly this question says constraint so you can apply that constraint again by both the syntax by using a python and sql but in exam most of the time we get sql only it is simple so there can be three options there can be three actions that can be taken while you are maintaining a quality first is they can give you a warning by default it is warned second is drop drop so okay i have some constraint hey some if there are duplicates 
if there are some nulls if there are uh, duplicate rows you drop them you drop them you can see drop okay cool drop or if there is some change in your source it should fail it should fail so it can drop or it can fail but many production scenarios we generally drop that because uh, whatever the duplicates and whatever null corrupt records are there it should drop and get into the new table you can catch that details in the delta live table so here you can see if you look at the question it is saying on violation drop rows so they are giving uh, the syntax is simple maybe i'll show you here just let me scroll down this is by python syntax if you get some time you can just watch that you can see this is sql syntax constraint constraint name except timestamp greater than okay so this will not do anything this will just warn you you can see this this will just warn you we are not writing any uh, exception after that so when you say accept and then you say drop you can see accept on violation you drop the row so constraint constraint name constraint name except if the current page is not null and your current page title is not null means if it is null if it is null on violating it will drop the row okay and here if it is on violation fail update fail it will fail and update so this is uh, these are the three uh, syntaxes you need to just look into it very carefully drop row fail update are the three modes okay this is how you can maintain the quality so maybe i'll take some real time example and do a separate video on delta live table with my own example maybe i'll do that later on so let me look at the questions here so let us look at the options here okay so records that violate the exception are dropped from the target database and logged into the quarantine table uh, i can see that they are dropped okay as i have told you row drop it will drop definitely it will drop so i'll just mark out few keywords here exception are dropped are dropped are dropped these are added it will go added it will go exception cause the job to fail no it doesn't because i said accept and drop so i need to look at these two options and uh, target database are loaded into a quarantine table so it is loaded into quarantine table uh, or what is the next question here recorded that violate the exception are dropped from the target database and recorded as invalid event logs yes so they are uh, dropped out of that uh, table and then it will be recorded as an as a invalid event logs so this is your correct option so they are recorded into a uh, separate table and they call it as an invalid in the event log so that is your option c c is the correct option for this let us move forward i hope you have got that yeah again based on the uh, streaming live table means a delta live table which of the following describes when to use a create streaming if you remember in previously i told you streaming uh, live is a keyword means that we are using a delta live table feature in that streaming means it is a streaming table delta live table is just a delta table it's not a streaming table okay uh, it was formerly called as a incremental live table but no worries now it is just a streaming live table you can ignore this when creating a delta live table using a sql okay let us see the options yeah uh, create live uh, create streaming live table should be used when the subsequent step in the delta live table is static no as i've told you streaming means it is streaming continuously it's not static uh, the create streaming live table should be used when the data is processed incrementally yes this is somewhat true create streaming live table is redundant for delta live it does not need to be used no it's not true uh, should be used when the data needs to be processed through complicated aggregation no it doesn't have any sense so i guess uh i have one more option create delta live table should be used a previous step in the delta live table pipeline is static no it is uh let me check the answer yeah it is true so the uh, streaming live table should be used when the data needs to be processed incrementally whenever you have an incremental data it is uh, we need to use a streaming live table 
again there might be a confusion guys uh, look at the question so they might ask you uh, the opposite also create live table syntax over the create streaming live table and that case the answer would be static i want you to please focus on the question and then answer it yeah thank you very much guys so these are your part 3 questions so maybe i'll release a part 4 questions uh, immediately where i'll be covering a little bit of questions on the delta live table with the production pipeline and the data governance thank you for watching so i request everyone if you like the content please share it with your friends please do subscribe to my channel like this video and there are other videos also on part 1 part 2 part 3 please do comment that you like this i really appreciate those who do it thank you very much see you in the next video keep learning guys